We know because our B value is negative and our C value is positive. Okay, the two numbers are actually going to both have the two factors we choose are going to both have to be negative. Because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. But in order to give us a negative B value, um, we're going to have to have negative numbers in our factor. Okay, so in this case, B is negative, C is positive. We're going to have two negative factors that we choose. Okay, so the product of all of these is 28. But you're going to see that only one of these pairs has a sum of negative 29. 1 plus 28 is positive 29. 2 and 14 is 16. Here we go. Negative 1 plus negative 28, negative 29. Negative 2, negative 14 is negative 16. Okay? We found our pair. Okay? Negative 1 and negative 28 multiply to give 28 and add to give negative 20. Multiply to give positive 28, sorry, and add to give negative 29. So we found our pair that multiplies to give C, adds to give B. Okay, so here's our pair right here, negative 1, negative 28. Good. So our pair is negative 1, negative 28. We'll let R equal negative 1, S equal negative 28. All we have to do now is sub in our R and S values into X plus R times X plus S. So this is equal to x plus negative 1 times x plus negative 28. Okay? When we have a positive and a negative beside each other, we know the negative always wins. So we have x minus 1 times x minus 28. So there are factors of this quadratic expression. Use FOIL, expand them out if you want to check and make sure you did your factoring properly. Okay? Good. Example number 4. Factor x squared plus 3x minus 18. We have a quadratic expression in standard form that has an a value of 1. Therefore, we can use sum and product factoring. Our b value is 3. c is negative 18. Let's find factors of negative 18. So we want to find factors that multiply to give negative 18. Okay? So if our product is a negative number, that means that one of the factors has to be negative and the other one has to be positive. Because when we multiply a negative and a positive together, it'll give us a negative product. Okay? So let's find factors of negative 18 that have a product of negative 18. Okay? So um, negative 3 times 6. Okay? So negative 3 and 6, that'll give us a product of negative 18. So will 3 and negative 6. Okay? That'll give us negative 18. Also, negative 18 and 1, that will give us a product of negative 18. And so will 1, or sorry, negative 1 and 18. Okay, that will give us negative 18. But let's see if any of these sets of numbers add to give us positive 3. Negative 3 plus 6, positive 3. Awesome, we're done right away. We found that set of numbers, nice and easy. Good, let me just show us that none of these other ones add to give positive 3. This gives negative 3, negative 17, positive 17, okay? But we found our set of numbers right away. Negative 3 and 6. Those multiply to negative 18, add to 3. So our R and S values, R is negative 3, S is 6. Once we plug those into X plus R times X plus S, we get X minus 3, times x plus 6. Good. Okay. So, sum and product factoring can actually be pretty fun when you, it's, you can think of it as kind of a game, you know, try and find those numbers that multiply to give c, add to give b, and once you find them, you get this good sense of accomplishment, and from then, what, that's the hard part, finding them. After then, it's nice and easy just plugging them into x plus r times x plus s. Okay? Good. Number five, second last one. Okay? This is where that first step of sum and product factoring um, comes into play. If you remember, the first step is to always look for a common factor before you begin. Okay? So if I want to factor 2x squared minus 8x minus 42, you'll notice my a value is not 1. Okay? So it's not clear if I can do sum and product factoring yet. The only way I'll be able to do sum and product factoring is if I can factor out this 2. Okay? And you'll notice 2 goes into each of these three terms okay, in this polynomial. So I can take out a 2. If I take out a 2, 
I'm left with x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay, so I took a 2 out from each term. Good. Now, I have um, a quadratic in standard form with an a value of 1. So I can factor this term, okay, or not this term, sorry, I can factor this quadratic expression, okay, using sum and product factoring because it has an a value of 1. An a value of 1, sorry. So, factoring this quadratic expression, my b value is negative 4, and my c value is negative 21, okay? So I need factors of negative 21 that are going to multiply to give us negative 21 and add to give us negative 4. So multiply to negative 21, add to negative 4, okay? So my product has to be negative, so that means that one of my factors is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. So let's find <coughs> factors that will multiply to give negative 21 and add to give negative 4, okay? So um, there aren't many factors of 21, okay? I can use 21 and 1. Okay, so negative 21 times 1, that'll multiply to give negative 21. And so will 21 and negative 1. That'll multiply to give negative 21. Also, 3 times negative 7, okay, that'll give us negative 21. And so will negative 3 and positive 7. That'll give us negative 21. Okay, so if I find the sum of these, these factors, okay, Negative 21 plus 1 is negative 20. 21 plus negative 1 is positive 20. 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4. Oh, and there that's what I'm looking for. Negative 4 as the sum. Negative 21 as the product. Good. So the factors I'm going to use are 3 and negative 7. Okay. Just to finish off that table, negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Okay. So these here, 3 and negative 7, are the factors that multiply to give C and add to get b. Okay, so I'm going to use my r value as 3 and my s as negative 7. And I'm going to plug those into my equation of x plus r times x plus s and I'll have my factors. One thing you have to remember is that we common factored out a 2 at the start. Okay, so that 2 has to stay out in front of our factors. That's the first factor, okay? We took that at the beginning. You can't forget about that one. And then we have x plus 3 times x minus 7, okay? If you expand all of this, you should be right back to this quadratic expression here, okay? So you can go ahead and check your answer that way. Good. Now, let's do the same example, but if there's a negative out front, okay? So once again, okay, we have a quadratic expression in standard form, but our a value is not 1. We can only do sum and product factoring if we can factor out this a value. Okay? And you'll notice we can take out a negative 2 from each term. So let's take out a negative 2. Okay? We'll have x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay? We took a negative, we divided each term by negative 2, okay? And put the negative 2 in front. Okay. Now I have a quadratic expression in standard form with an a value of 1, so I can use sum and product factoring. My b value is negative 4, my c value is negative 21. Okay. So I need factors of negative 21 that multiply to give negative 21 and add to give negative 4. Okay. So I can use the factors of 3 and negative 7, okay? 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4, okay? So at this point, you want to be good at, um, if you have to use trial and error and just write down all the factors to give negative 21, that's fine. Um, the more examples you do, the better you'll be at picking out on your first try the factors that multiply to give C and add to give B, okay? Good. So 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4. So we can use our r value as 3, our s value as negative 7, and we can put that into our equation. 
y equals x plus r times x plus s. Not forgetting that we factored out a negative 2 at the beginning. Okay, so that stays out front. And our factors are x plus 3 and x minus 7. Okay, so there's our answer. And once again, you could expand this out using our FOIL method and our distributive property, okay, and get back to this expression. Good. Last example. Okay. Determine the binomial factors that represent the dimensions of the rectangular water guard. Okay. So if we remember, area of a rectangle is length times width times width. That's a weird looking W. Okay. Length times width. Okay. So if we find if we remember when we factor y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay, if a is 1, we use sum and product factoring, and this gives us x plus r times x plus s, okay, so it gives us two binomials that are multiplied by each other, okay, so you could think of this as the length and this as the width, okay, so when we multiply those together, we will get the area, okay, so you can think of it that way. So we know our area is x squared plus 5x plus 6, okay? And we've just said that if we factor this, we can consider the, the binomial factors as the length and the width, okay? So if we factor this, okay? I'm not going to make a chart for this one, okay? We need to find factors that multiply to give 6 and add to give positive 5, okay? 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So our factors are going to be 3 and 2. Okay, so x plus 3 times x plus 2 are our factors of x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, so therefore we can consider our length as x plus 3 and our width as x plus 2. Okay. So determine the binomial factors that represent the dimensions of the rectangular water garden. Okay, our, our dimensions are um, x plus 3 and x plus 2. I probably should have labeled this. I labeled my length and width backwards. The length should be longer. Okay, so this would be my width. This would be my length. Okay, so our length is x plus 3 and our width is x plus 2. Okay, so these factors can represent the length and width. And if we, wanted, if we were given this length and width as factors, okay, we could find the area because we know all we have to do is multiply length times width. If we multiply these binomials together using the FOIL method, we should get this resulting expression, which is the area. Okay? So that's it for today. Here's just a quick summary. So if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, and a is 1, or it can be factored out, we can use sum and product factoring. So remember this, we're going to refer to as sum and product factoring. Only when a is 1, or it can be factored out, okay? And if you're, you might be wondering why I have it set equal to zero here, okay? We're going to talk about that more in chapter six, okay? But why it's set, why I have, instead of why I have a zero, because you'll know the whole point of um, factoring a quadratic expression is to be able to solve for the x-intercepts, and in order to solve for x-intercepts, we need to set y to zero, because every point on the x-axis has a y-coordinate of zero, okay? So just very briefly, that's why it's set as zero right there. But other than that, um, that's it for today. Here's a little bonus you can try that has two variables in the middle there. Just follow the same steps and see if you can do it. Okay. Um, so today, um, our A value was 1, or it could be factored out. Um, tomorrow, you can probably guess what we're going to learn is if A is not 1, and it cannot be factored out. Okay. Here's the homework to give a shot. Okay. Try it tonight. Come to class tomorrow with any questions you have. Other than that, thanks for watching, and see ya.